went to a funeral. And, you know, things happen to me sometimes, and I see things, and I notice things, and my mind, I think, I think I process too much sometimes in the intellect. So then when I get tired of processing it in the intellect, I let it spill over into my spirit man because I want to have the answer. If it doesn't make sense to my mind, I just kind of let it go and say, God, what are you really saying? I saw one of the most amazing experiences as far as singing yesterday. The guy, one of the guys did a solo. I meant to get his information. He played the keyboard. He did a solo, and he sang a rendition of Walking Around Heaven all day. And it was the most beautiful. It was better than the original. It was beautiful. And it was one of those funerals where people weren't really paying attention, and the guy started singing, and everybody started looking, where's the winds are coming from? Go and see him. So it's just beautiful, beautiful, high in the spirit. People stood up. Unsaved people stood up and, and gave God some praise. And then, because we were so high after that song, the preacher came. So you were expecting some excellent preaching, or at least some really good preaching, right? And not that he was a bad preacher. He'd been preaching, it looked like he'd been preaching for about 50 years. And he said some good things, and he said some nuggets. But it didn't make any sense. It wasn't flowing together. And I didn't understand why. Why would a man have been preaching that long and that anointed? He said some stuff. He even said something that made me go back and get in the Bible. He said something that was profound, but it didn't flow. I couldn't follow him in what he was saying. So I know that the layperson couldn't really put it together. Well, why, God, would it be such a contrast to what had already happened? What does it mean? Earlier today, he put me in mind of the Karate Kid. Remember that movie? Yeah. <laughs> I had a whole different message. Karate Kid wanted to glean from the, the guru, Mr. Miyagi. Mr. Miyagi put him to work, and he had him waxing his car, painting his fence, sanding his deck, and probably six or seven or eight other different chores. And every time the Karate Kid would ask Mr. Miyagi, when was he going to learn some karate? He said, not yet done, your son. Keep working, keep working. And it was when he had got to the point of frustration that he went to Mr. Miyagi and he said, you know, I had a whole different message. I promise I'm not going this way. When am I going to learn some karate? I'm tired of being used like this. All you're doing is using me to do your dirty work, your handiwork. I'm not even getting paid for it. I don't see the benefit is it. I want to learn some karate right now. Right now. Oh, I'm walking. And Mr. Miyagi said, you've been learning it all the time, Daniel Thornton. He said, you haven't taught me anything. He said, but yes, I have. <laughs> <laughs> and Danny, Danny was looking all kind of perplexed as I was going around in a circle. Mr. Miyagi was wise and patient. And he said, let me show you. Do you remember when I had you sanding the deck? Back and forth, back and forth. Do you remember how I told you to paint the fence? Up and down, up and down. How to wax the car? Wax on, wax off. Wax on, wax off. And with every movement, with every lesson, when it was time, they all flowed together effortlessly. Each lesson was a different dimension in his learning process, so that without even knowing it, Danny was well prepared to be a karate champion. Now, in the spirit, we don't think of it quite the same way, although in a lot of ways it's exactly the same. There's several different movements, several different exercises. You have to learn how to Block the enemy. And not only do you block, <laughs> block, but you counter. 
block, counter, block, counter, block, counter, until it's a fluid movement. Around the way, they call it a two-piece. <laughs> In the spirit, we call it victory. How many people know what I'm talking about? On this morning. So as he put me in mind of the Karate Kid, it made more sense of what the preacher was preaching about yesterday. It wasn't so much that it didn't make sense. It was the fact that the dimensions weren't flowing together as easily as I would want them to. The dimensions were there. So then what does it mean for us? God, how does it relate to who we are and where we are? He told me, the power of life and death are in the tongue. The power of life and death are in the tongue. Proverbs 18 and 21 says the power of life and death are in the tongue. So that means if I speak life, life will be. If I speak death, death will be. Seems simple enough. We're taught since we're little children to speak only good things or kind things. Our mothers will tell us, if you don't have something nice to say about someone, don't say anything at all. And depending on how much of that you receive, it also depends on how blessed you feel. Have you ever noticed that no matter how prosperous someone can seem, if they happen to have negativity that comes through their mouth, they're never ever going to be By contrast, doesn't matter how much someone doesn't have, if they speak life, if they're happy, they are blessed. Amen. So what you're saying, Pastor, is that consequently, the true abundance is joy. Amen. Love and joy. God's love equals joy. Well, if we understand that the love is the abundance, the love is the prosperity, the love is the key, everybody wants to have more love, his love is the fuel for everything, then how do we access more of that? As lay people walking into the church, we would say more blessings. Everybody wants to be blessed. Just makes sense. It's human nature. Some of us, that was the reason why you accepted Christ to begin with. And some of you, after you accepted Christ, you walk further because of that. It's more of a carrot. You want more blessings? You do what he tells you to do. It's innate. We're trained from the time we're little kids. You want a blessing? You do what your parent tells you to do. You want a reprimand? Do the opposite. Human nature. Right? So then, God, what are you telling me now? You say the power of life and death is in the tongue. You're not telling me that I have to only speak positive things. Really, you're giving me a choice. Amen. You see, at some point, a baby is no longer a baby. At some point, a baby becomes a child. And at some point, the child becomes a preteen. And at some point, the teen becomes a teen. And at some point, the teen becomes a young man or a young woman. There is a progressive nature in the maturity of the child. There's a progressive nature in the maturity of a Christian. It's no longer a reprimand or a smack on your hand because now you have to understand that what you create are the consequences or the blessings based on what you do. Amen. Amen. How many people know what I'm talking about Amen. on this morning? So basically, God, if you've equipped me by the trials and the tribulations, if you've shown me by the lessons you've taken me through that I have the ability to be a karate master in the spirit, what then would be the next step? Wax on, wax off. <laughs> the power of life and death are in the tongue. What if, Johnny... What if you could literally see the words that come out of your mouth? Do you know if you walk in the spirit, you can see the formation of that which you speak? 
He allows me to see it sometimes. If I speak a blessing on someone, especially if it's a healing prayer, I can see the, the, the healing spirit. Looks like a cloud almost, translucent. I can see it come out of my mouth. And it depends on where they are. If they have the faith to receive it, it will immediately kind of go into their head and dissipate. If the, if the faith is a stumbling block, it'll kind of get stuck right here. Sometimes I have to pray that their mind be reset so they can receive the healing. Amen. Isn't that right, Pastor T? Great woman of faith. Known her for 122 years. I remember one time in particular, she doesn't complain much about her own stuff. But one time in particular, a few years ago, she had a, a, a migraine. And I believe she gets migraines on a rare basis, but when she gets them, if I remember correctly, they're very painful. And I believe she also has some sort of early warning sign, like you see prisms or something. And we were talking, and we were talking about some church business, and I was, you know, my personality, I was going kind of quick, and I wanted to get it done. And, and, and she asked me, she told me that she was about to have a migraine, and she asked me to pray for her. And I think I might have kept talking or made it, maybe hesitated. She asked me again to pray for her. And when I prayed for her, I saw the formation of the healing spirit, like a cloud, come right here before her head. She's a woman of faith. I was ready to go on to the next thing. But she was still looking kind of cross-eyed. Like, what's wrong with you? You should be healed. <laughs> Come on back so we can finish this. <laughs> God spoke in my right ear and told me to pray for her mind so she could receive it. And when I said that prayer, it, it went in. The, the cloud went away. It was received. It was absorbed. The power of life and death are in the tongue. If I can do it, then you can do it. Amen. Amen. It's the same thing. He allows the formation of the power of healing, the power of deliverance. For some of you, you're walking into the creative power. We're joint heirs. We're co-creators. It's the same God. If you've ever prayed for a head cold and gotten healed, if you ever prayed that he would bless you with a miracle, like a, opening up a parking space, and you saw it happen, he blessed you and told you what store to go to. If he blessed you and, and you prayed for one of your kids and, and he moved on that. If you've ever received the blessing of having a prayer answer, a personal prayer to answer, then I'm talking to you. Amen. Amen. Doesn't matter how small the miracle was, it's the same mechanism. So if you prayed that your flower garden would look pretty in the spring, if you prayed that he would bless you to have some new furniture or a new car, if he prayed that the kids would be better in school or anything, you have access to what I am speaking of. Amen. The power of life and death are in the tongue. Psalms, I want to take my time, this is more of a teaching message. 103 and 20 says, the angels hearken to the voice of God. That is, the holy and powerful words that we speak to ourselves and to others over circumstances are in line with God's word. So if I'm a joint heir, if I'm a co-creator, if I understand the mechanism, if it's second nature for me because of the expressions that I've gone through, okay, then that means that if I'm in line to speak God's word and I'm synchronized with that, then the word must go forth and create. Amen. Amen. You ever wonder why your prayers are hit or miss sometimes? Because sometimes you're praying and you're lined up, and sometimes you're praying and you're not. Well, God, if I wanted my prayers to be more effective, then how do I stay lined up all the time? The power of life and death is in the tongue. 
The power of life and death is in the tongue. Look at your neighbor and say, the power of life and death is in the tongue. Man of God, what do you mean? I mean that the more you realize the power of this instrument, look at your neighbor and stick your tongue out. Say, that's power. That's power. The more you realize how much power that little member has, the more you will guard that power. I see your car. Most of you, if you leave your car, what's the first thing you do? Check up. If you walked away and didn't lock it, you'll go back. Check up. Some of us, we're obsessive about having our cars clean. I know I am. Maybe it's a God thing. Or our houses, women, has always amazed me. Why do you think that five locks on the front door is going to be more protective? They, they're not coming in the front door. <laughs> they're going to come in the roof or the windows. <laughs> but in our mind, we think if we lock up, if we, if we protect that which is valuable, then we're safe. But yet we will allow our tongue to wag all different directions, whether negative or positive, not realizing that not only is it speaking negativity when you're speaking negativity to the person you're speaking negativity about, but it's also opening the door for negativity to come into you and dwarfing your creative power. Amen. That's a good place to... <laughs> negativity may not just be in the way of gossiping about someone or saying something negative about someone. It may just be in the way of speaking doubt or fear, or any sort of lack. Amen. I have a couple of saints in particular who love to tell me prolific things, who love to pontificate. They want to tell me how deep they are. And then halfway through their dissertation, they always insert the word, but. It's not just one of you, so don't feel bad, because I see a couple of you, it's about three or four of you. And it drives me nuts. And usually the ones that like to use it are the ones that really want to be the deepest ones. Oh, my God. Power of life and death are in the tongue. Amen. Amen. Yes, I believe that God could do this. And yes, I believe this. And yes, I know he said this. And yes, and yes, and yes, and yes. But I want to throw the phone sometimes. You stay right there. I know it's going to get quiet right now. Got any amens on that synthesizer over there? I'm not going to get any more <laughs> past this point. <laughs> I had to write it out. <laughs> you ever walk into a department store, a mall, or a restaurant that had a revolving door? You step into the revolving door? You might be chatting or looking behind you, and you look, you missed your exit, and look, before you know it, you've gone all the way around and come out the other side. That seems ridiculous to most people. I've seen it happen. You ever been driving in D.C.? I grew, I grew up in D.C., learned how to drive on Rhode Island Avenue. First time I ever drove a car. Parallel Park, that city. I could probably parallel park a semi. Except for most SUVs came to this. <laughs> it gave me a spot this big one time, asked me to park it. <laughs> Bam! <laughs> Create a power. <laughs> it didn't work, so I created a new <laughs> parking spot down the block that was bigger. <laughs> If you drive around a circle in D.C. and you're not paying attention, or if you happen to be in the wrong lane, you will miss your exit. Now, the objective is, is going in a straight line. You go around the circle. It should be a half circle if you want to continue on in the same direction. But if you miss the exit, if you miss the connector in the circle, you get caught in the loop. And now you get caught in the loop, depending on what circle you're in, if you try to get back the same way or you take the wrong exit, you're going to get jacked up. You can know where you are and where you want to go in the city and still get lost for 10 minutes because of the way the traffic patterns are. How many people know what I'm talking about? So if the same is true in the natural, it must be true in the supernatural. How do I avoid the circle? How do I avoid the loop? How do I keep 
from getting tossed in a different direction than how I want to go uh, by avoiding the circle all together. Amen. The power of life and death are in the tongue. If you speak doubt, if you speak negativity, if you speak fear, if you speak gossip, if you speak anything other than positive, life-giving, free-flowing, God's love through you, then you're going to get caught in the circle. And your direction will be messed up. And your creative power is then not lined up. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. His words are flowing through us that angels respond. Dictionary.com defines hearken. It means to give heed to, to listen to, or to pay close attention to. So if the angels hearken the word of God, That means that the angels pay close attention to the word of God. Dictionary.com defines the word of God is the manifestation of the mind and the will of God. Amen. So the word of God is the manifestation of what he wants and how he thinks. He's given us the word to understand what he wants and how he thinks. And then on top of it, he's made us co-creators by giving us the power in our tongue to create life. Life more abundantly by the power of his resurrection that's in us by accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. So we have this power to speak and have things be. We have the power to take his word in us and to multiply it. It's, it's, a, it's a multiplication of the manifestation. In other words, our kids end up being more than we are. If we impart in our children, they grow up to be more, to, to expand, to carry on the legacy. The word that he's given us is for us to receive, to understand, to allow it to manifest us in us, and to progressively grow. We become co-creative vessels with him. Amen. The only way that we... The only way that we hinder our power is by speaking the negative. Amen. Because if we speak it, then it becomes. If we speak it, then we believe it. If we speak it, it manifests. You can't speak a blessing and a curse from the same vessel. Amen. I know several days ago I was laughing with one of my family members. I think it was my mother. It was my sister. I don't know. I was laughing about somebody else in the family. It was a joke, and you know, I kind of, you know, I mean, you probably have to edit this part. We don't want this on TV. But occasionally, I can be a little jokey. I know you didn't notice. And I can say some slick things about people without really being mean. Whatever it was was funny. But as I was speaking it, it wasn't really mean. It wasn't really negative. But the spirit wasn't right. And I could feel it in my belly. I forgot who I was laughing at. It was some, one of the other family members that had done something. And it was whatever they had done was way off the mark. <laughs> I mean, it was out there. But it wasn't my place to magnify that. Amen. Does that make sense? By me magnifying that, that's magnifying the negative energy in me, and it's taking away from the positive creative energy that's in me. Does that make sense? Yes. And even though it wouldn't have been gossipy, and even though it wouldn't have been necessarily hurtful in the words that I was using, or even me, I did it in a way that was, that was funny and sarcastic. But I could feel it pulling on my spirit on the inside. I could use another example. Some of you will do things, and as I mentioned a moment before, you will speak in doubt or in fear, or you'll leave the door open for doubt. 
or you put a butt on there. Anytime you use a butt, imagine yourself getting caught in a circle and flip back the other way. Okay, but negates everything that was said prior to. I believe God's going to do a miracle, and I believe he's going to bless me, and he's going to move mightily, and he's going to do this and this, but you just pulled up everything that you put down, and you changed directions. It's like a game of Uno. When you put the car down, it says reverse, reverse, and you have three or four reverses, and you forget whose turn it is. That's what you just did. Okay, it's confusing. That's what the enemy wants to do, confuse you. So you don't know which direction you're going, so you're not able to walk in your power. The power of life and death are in the tongue. You all are co-creators. You're joint heirs. Why am I harping on this? Because I want you to understand that in our human condition, it's our natural fallback position to flip to something human, which would be imperfect if there's doubt or fear or discomfort. Amen. Amen. When it's a faith trial, our natural position is to fall back to an area of lack of fear or doubt. If it's a faith trial, you might fall back to fear. And you, and, and bless me with the words, I'm not saying that that's not going to be your first reaction. It probably is until you learn how to be smarter than your human instinct or to override your human instinct. What I am saying is you cannot stay at that place. Amen. Right. Amen. The negative that you may see is only a reference point to go to the opposite end of the spectrum. You follow me? Yeah. So in the circle, when you hit the circle, you hit the circle and if the doubt is where you hit the circle, you want to loop all the way around, halfway through, and come out the other side to where it is confirmation of what you spoke, which is life. If you catch yourself saying something that's negative or doubtful or fearful, just correct it. You know what? I'm not going to say but. You know what? I'm not going to say if God does it. I know he's already done it. You know what? I'm not going to say when he decides to bless me, if he decides to bless me. I know he's going to bless me in this area. His word says so. He's made me a joint heir and a creative vessel with his power in me. I'm going to stand on his word and walk on what he's already shown me. I walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. Amen. I'm a miracle working vessel by the miracle working power of Jesus the Christ in me. Amen. I can have abundance in every area of my life. Many of us think of abundance as something that's on the outside of us. It has nothing to do with it. As a matter of fact, before you see the manifestation of complete abundance in every area, it will manifest inside you. Amen. The Bible says to the full, then the overflow. To the full, comma, to the overflow. In order for it to overflow in the outward manifestation, it has to be full on the inside. If you put a glass of water under a faucet and you fill it all the way up, before it gets to the point of overflowing, the inside has to be full. You have to be full with his miraculous, creative resurrection power in every area. And the way that you allow yourself to be full is to fill up every hole. And every hole is be, is con, continues to be uh, blocked by not speaking death or lack or doubt or fear. And if you do speak it, you correct it. Amen. 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 Give the Lord a praise. Creative power, the power of life and death are in the tongue. Creative power, the power of life and death are in the tongue. Say it to your neighbor. Creative power, the power of life and death are in the tongue. Now right now as we're turning the page, as we're walking into another chapter of the mission that we have, I want you to look at uh, Romans 8 and 17. Romans 8 and 17. And while you go there, I'm going to go ahead and just read a part of it. It says, heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs of Christ, 
An heir, just so you know, is someone who inherits or has a legal right to an inheritance. And just as Jesus the Christ has access to everything of God, so do we. Heirs through Jesus. That's why the enemy will sometimes mess with some people and try to get them not to think of Jesus as Lord and Savior. He has the access. He's the gateway. <coughs> the cross is, is, is the center. Because of Jesus the Christ, we are joint heirs to everything of God. God created everything. He is everything. And because Jesus went to the cross and died for us, we become joint heirs with him to everything. If we understand the power we have, then we can learn how to use this power. The Bible is full of God's spoken word going forth and, and how he accomplished great and mighty things. And he taught the prophets and the apostles how to use this power as he's teaching us right now. At the beginning of time, he spoke life into existence, and he spoke, um, he spoke life into dead situations. He told Lazarus to get up, and he did. He told the wind and the seas to calm down, and they did. He spoke and restored life to Jazarus' dead daughter, and she was restored. And there are numerous examples in the Bible of, of, of Jesus speaking life and, and miracles and them happening. But even before Jesus... Before the manifestation of Jesus the Christ, there was always the dimension of Jesus with resurrection power. In the Old Testament, there are several examples of men of God speaking life, speaking resurrection power, as well as other miracles. Well, God, if you're the same yesterday, today, and forever, if you bless me to be a joint heir with Jesus the Christ, if one can do it, I can do it too. If you look at Proverbs 18 and 21, and it says, be quick to listen and slow to speak. Quick to listen and slow to speak. This is something I've been working on for years for myself. I've gotten better. Still not perfect. But I'm being perfected in that area. A lot of times I talk to people, I talk to saints, and before they listen to what I am saying, they want to shoot back and answer. It's almost like in their mind they want to be deep. When really, really, the really deep people are going to receive it here first. Somebody lays something heavy on me, I'm not going to usually answer right away. Matter of fact, if it's really heavy, I'm going to tell you, I'll get back to you in a day or two. Isn't that right? For the ones that have been around me for a long time, is this something really heavy? I'm going to say, you know what, let me, let me, I might say something like, let me ponder that, but really means what, let me digest it, let me pray about it, let me meditate on it. Because I don't want my answer to be from here. And if I answer from here, immediately I'm not receiving it here. Amen. Amen. My human intellect is fallible. And I think I'm a fairly intelligent person. But the true answer to everything is in the abundance of God's creative power. Amen? Amen. James 1 and 19 says we must ask daily, daily, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing unto you. So how do I line my words up? If I know that my words are, give me the ability to create what will manifest before me, then how do I get my words in line? You have to not only try to train your intellect, it's not a learned behavior as much as it is behavior that is innate. It's an impartation. The revelation is in your spirit, man. You have to pray, God, line me up. Line me up that my words are your words. Several saints laugh at me. Before I speak sometimes, especially if I'm going to change directions or move in a corrective action, I want to hear what he's saying. Lord, bless me with the words. Now they laugh because sometimes they think I'm going to strike a match on that tail. You probably want to edit that. 
But generally, it's what God is saying. <laughs> Even correction should be in God. Matter of fact, most often, not most often, all the time, the correction should come from here. In other words, let me go here for a second. Sometimes we think that it's okay to swing into the negative if someone is offending us. And I'm certainly not saying that you have to be weak as a Christian. We, the meek, shall inherit the earth. That doesn't mean you're weak. Right, amen. You're strong. However, the words, even if it needs to be a corrective action, the words, the tone, the spirit should be from God. Amen, amen. He can get somebody straight better than you could ever imagine. Listen to him. Let it drop in your spirit for what to say, how to say it, when to say it. And that way you're not getting out of line because you feel like you're supposed to light somebody up. Amen. They may bark at you and they just need a hug. They may bark at you and they just need you to tell them that you love them. They may bark at you and they may need a corrective word. But you need to hear from God exactly what needs to be said and when. He'll adjust your tone. He'll adjust your presentation. He will adjust the spirit behind it. He will give you the words to say. And generally, it's done in short order. On the flip side of that, some people are the opposite. They don't ever want to say anything to anybody. They don't ever want to be confrontational. They will continue to get walked over and then hold it all in and feel broken. Lord, bless me with the words to say. Bless me to say everything I say in a way to edify you. Bless me, Lord, to walk in my greatest potential, in my co-creative power with you. My words are power. I am a co-creator. The power of life and death are in the tongue. And if you speak left, death, if he's showing you death, it is only as a left margin so that you can see that life is life more abundantly. You don't get stuck in death. Death is just merely a, a transition. You don't even stop. It's a pause as you make that right turn. Amen? Amen. Death can't hold you. It couldn't hold Christ. How long was he there? Two and a half days? Three days? And he went and took the keys to everything. Gave us the ring as joint heirs. Amen. Well, we don't even have to pause at death. It's merely a left margin. If you see what it is, understand what it is, speak what it is, then you realize that you don't hold on to death. It merely passes through. It's a song that he's been dealing uh, with me, showing me the other day. I surrender all. I really listened to the words the other day. The enemy it, it tries to lock you into death. Well, anytime you feel something that's not life, you just, I surrender all, God. He flows right through you. You release it. It's like, like, like you're purging it. I surrender all. Anytime you feel that pull, like it feels like that, I surrender all. I surrender all. I surrender all. And when you say it, I surrender all, look at my posture. The position of Christ on the cross and the center of the cross is where the power is to everything. Amen. Everything. The power of life and death is in the tongue. I'm closing soon. Why would you speak death if death has already been conquered? Proverbs 16 and 24 says, Gracious words are like a honeycomb, sweetness to the soul and health to the body. Our body, our mind, our soul are healed and made whole by the positive, powerful words we speak and are spoken to. Funeral yesterday, one of my aunts, who I don't see very often, was there. I think she's about 81, 82. And when I see her, I don't really get a chance to talk to her that much. You know, she's my aunt. She's my brother's, my uncle's wife who's passed on. And she had on some big sunglasses. And she had on a purplish um, jacket. She had, I'm not one of her favorite nephews. That's probably only, uh, I'm not one of her favorites. Probably in four years, because she has a son that's about a year older than me. And we got in a fight in the yard one day, and I kicked him. 
she hadn't forgiven me in 40 years. <laughs> you won't have to edit this one. <laughs> Kicked him hard, too. He, he's just now forgiven me. So I said to my aunt, I wasn't always a pastor, who can I say? Plus, I think he hit me first. But. <laughs> I was in karate at the time, too. <laughs> well, 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 well. <laughs> I said to my aunt, who always waits for me to speak, she had glasses on kind of like queen. I said, Aunt Joyce, you look like, you're going to have to edit this because I'm calling her name. You look like a movie star with those sunglasses on. She just almost melted. (laughs) (laughs) And her son was standing there, my cousin, and his son, and one of her other grandsons. And they all look like, (laughs) because she's kind (laughs) of, She's kind of she's a rough on. She carries a pistol on her purse, literally. <laughs> no, literally. <laughs> and she had on a little purple thing about that color. And I said, and this, this thing right here makes you look like a queen. <laughs> she was almost slain in the spirit by a couple of kind words. But I genuinely meant it. Amen. From here, you can change somebody's atmosphere. You can change somebody's day. You can change their outlook. You can change the way they feel with just the words, like you with the homeless man. Amen? Amen. Amen. You have the power to co-create. Now, if you put your right hand or your left hand on somebody's shoulder, let me show you something. The power of God's love is progressive, and it multiplies. Y'all can touch each other. Both of you showered, right? Well, maybe one of you. It multiplies. Why don't you scoot your chair up? You, why do you always got to sit in the back? It multiplies. And after you get over the five seconds of discomfort for our human space, you'll feel the flow. When you hug people, especially in this environment, the love is so free. Doesn't the hug feel good? Amen. If you hug two or three people, you really feel good, right? might not even like them. (laughs) But you're tied to them. Right? We are conductors of his power. And his power in the most complex form and in the most simplest, in in the simplest form, is love. It's a current. It flows. When you allow him to flow through you, when it's positive, loving energy, it expands, it multiplies in you. So you speak life, guess what? You get more power. Get more power comes more blessings. That's how we started this whole thing. We want to be blessed, right? The more power you have, the more blessed you are. If you don't speak life, you speak something negative, then move your hand. Move your hand real quick. Why y'all had to be different? (laughs) You put your hands on each other since you were the only ones. No, 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 you two. You two. You sitting there with your arms crossed. Here. <laughs> now, how do you feel? Does it feel different now? Yeah. It's cut off, isn't it? It's not flowing. It's fluidly. That's what happens. Now, imagine if you were in a body cast. That's how you're cut off when you speak negative, when you speak death, basically. Doubt. Fear, negativity, gossip. When you speak life, it's free-flowing. You're more illuminated. You've got power. When you speak negative, it's not free-flowing. Let me show you something different. Johnny, do me a favor. Go away by that light switch, would you? See how lit up the room is right now? Flip all of them off, Johnny, would you? Yeah, we need Nikki. You get them all off at one time. You had a whole building door. Negative. Now flip them all on. Positive. You all are beacons of light. When you are speaking positive, when you're speaking life, when you're allowing his free-flowing light to move through you, you are illuminated. Flip them off. 
When you speak negativity, doubt, fear, gossip, you're dark. Flip them back on. That's why sometimes you can see people come in and they're illuminated in the spirit. It ain't because they got a new face cleanser. <laughs> they're full of God's love and it's moving through them. They hit a rough patch in life and they start speaking doubt, start speaking fear, start speaking negativity. It ends up being dark. You get the idea, right? Thank you, gentlemen. Give a little praise for these guys. Okay, I'm closing soon. So you want to speak sweet words. You want to speak sweet and loving words. You want to speak them as, 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 as let me ask you something. How do you feel when somebody tells you you look good? Especially if you took a little extra effort. Huh? Not, now, you know if you're looking busted and somebody say you look good. Either they need cataract surgery or they're just trying to, <laughs> they're just trying to be nice. But I'm talking about when you took a little extra effort. Right? Amen. You say you look nice. Look at somebody. Tell them you look nice. Now, find something about them that you genuinely like, that they're wearing today or smelling like today or said today that you genuinely like. Genuinely like. That is the easiest way to open the gateway to give somebody love. Make it genuine. Don't give them a fake compliment. People know when you're lying to them. Don't tell them you, tell them the baby's cute if he looks like a monster. Don't do it. Don't tell them you like the shoes if they got... You know, it looked like they did an oil change with those shoes on. <laughs> Tell the truth. Find something that you genuinely like and give it to them because what you're doing is you're feeling it and then you're projecting it. Then when you project it, they receive it and they have to give it back. It has to come back to you. Love is the only resource in the entire universe that is guaranteed to give you a greater return than what you put out every single time. And don't always look for it to come back the same way from the person you gave it to. Amen. That's where we get stuck in our negative. Well, I, spoke to, uh, I spoke to Shirley and she didn't even look my way. She might not have heard you. She might not like you. Either way, it's okay. You gave love, so it has to come back to you. Right. It's not personal. He's not ble it's not personal for you. You are no longer... It's no longer about you, not really. If you allow him, if you do your job, your missions right now are to be love bugs, to be love vessels, your dispensers of love. You ever see one of those cedars when you push it in the yard, it kind of spins around? Well, guess what? The seeds that he's given you are the seeds of love, and you spread them all around. So if one of them doesn't get in, okay, well, guess what? You gave out 10,000 more that day. Amen. Amen? Amen. Don't get caught up in the one that didn't catch. You stay focused on the one that did so that you can continue to be a free-flowing vessel for his love. You stay blessed, even if they're not. Amen. Your job is to stay blessed. The power of life and death are in the tongue. Okay? All right, I got just a little bit more. I know it's a little longer than usual, but I don't care. Love. I want to make sure I want to make sure you get it. Is that better? I just want you to be blessed. <laughs> Ephesians 4 and 29 says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good and for the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. You want to be a blessing. Your words want to be blessed. You want to make sure that the spirit behind it is blessed. And last but not least, we are walking vessels for Christ. We represent all that he is, and so our words and all we do must reflect hope, love, and all things positive. We have the power to go, call those things as though they were. And let me stop you for a second. You want to be vessels moving in complete love, striving toward perfection. It is a moving target. You're never going to be perfect vessels as being human, but you always want to be better today than you were yesterday. Amen. Now, what does that mean? What happens if you have a stumbling block? What happens if you say something? What happens if something catches you off guard and you react in a way that you thought you were beyond? 
you want to stop and you want to immediately repent. Don't hold on to it. Don't beat yourself up because the enemy will have you. Oh, my God. Now, you know, I said boo-boo to Scooter and, and now Scooter is mad at me and I feel bad. I might as well just stop being a Christian. No. God, please forgive me. I didn't mean to. I didn't know. Help me with this. Heal me in this area. Bless me. Elevate me so I can continue to ascend. Amen. Period. It could be a five-minute prayer. Touch me and heal me in this area that I didn't know was broken. Bless me to continue to be more and better as your vessel. The negative is always a left margin. It is not a rest stop. It's a left margin so you can see life and see life more abundantly. Amen. So if you see a negative, guess what? It's a new paragraph. It's a left margin. Don't look at the negative. Look at it as a left margin. What comes after the left margin? All of the words. Amen? So if you see a negative, well, guess what? That means that I'm supposed to start the paragraph here. The negative is a reference point. God, I didn't know. Bless me. Help me understand. And then bless me with the revelation to go on. Amen? Amen. 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 You all are co-creative vessels. You're joint heirs with Christ. Romans 4 and 17 says, simply believing and speaking it out of our mouths, the angels hearken to the voice of God. He's using you as his voice. By illuminating his word and his power, you are his vessels. You're his voice. His voice. And that's not always to speak life over dead situations, as I said, but we walk by faith and not by sight. So even when it looks dead, especially when it looks dead, you only see life. You only speak life. And if you ever make a stumbling block, you go back and curse that dead thing and speak even more life and life more abundantly. Amen. 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 So remember, the power of life and death are in the tongue. God bless you. Come on, team. Let's get one more.